Hey everybody, welcome to Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. I'm your host, Chris Cosentino. We are here to talk about people that inspire and all my guests are inspiring in so many different ways. And I'm really looking forward to digging deep into how they got to where they are, to the top of their game, how hard they've worked, how much they've given up and how they're giving back. So without further ado, here's our next guest. Hey everybody, welcome to Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. Today, I am with Katerina Nash. And for those of you who are not familiar, we're talking dual Olympian here. We're talking winter and summer, monster on the bike, monster on cross country skis. I wonder, do you tele ski or do you just cross country ski? Is that question? There's that question. Uh, I back country, so <laughs> not, uh, never picked up tele skis, but I definitely really, really enjoy back country. So, yeah. So, Kettering, you, the, I've, I've been fortunate enough to ride with you. I know your history. Um, and I think it's really interesting. You started in cross country ski racing and you were seen at an event and everybody said, this woman's got a motor that can just power. How, and like, how did it all come from there? I mean, that's, that, that's a pretty you know, you're talking totally different world jump, but it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I've, I feel fortunate that I've been around to see it, you know, whether it be at Sea Otter or all these other events and, you know, watched you come whipping by me, like I'm standing still. <laughs> well, I think uh, cross country skiing is, it's such a good sport that it really builds that engine. You know, it's uh the racing is anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour and a half. And you train for that high intensity from very young age. So a lot of their, a lot of the racing at the young age, it's really more 15 minutes to 45 minutes. So we're talking like that top end, you know, high speed, uh, using every single muscle there is in the body while cross-country skiing. So yeah, the, the heart gets to work pretty hard. And uh, I don't know, I just, I'm just thankful that I was a cross-country skier because I think it just gave me a, a lot of skills, like whether it's having a good engine, but it's also good balance, kind of having a strong upper body and legs and <laughs> and there's technique obviously you know you can just like mouth making you can you can win it on the downhill but you can also lose it on the downhill so to speak so I always enjoy the sports that don't only involve the fitness like a little bit of technique and tactics and those kind of things are pretty fun so uh yeah and as a cross-country skiers we you know we don't we don't stay on the snow all year so there's a lot of summer training off season um uh, and obviously bikes were always a big part of that and uh eventually i just made my transition into cycling full-time in my uh, 20s and yeah it's been it's been a good switch i definitely enjoy combining uh both the sports in my uh athletic career so you with luna originally right and you know you were mountain biking when did had you dabbled in cross before was it something that you were looking at did you want to do that did you or did you just prefer to ride a mountain bike i mean there's there's so many disciplines now and on the bike it just gives you this outlet to play right you know and what was what what did you want to dabble in first or was it just did you want all of it at once so when I was born there, there weren't mountain bikes back then. So I got, um, I sort of got into the sport uh, as a teenager. And that's how uh, that, I mean, when I signed with Luna, I was a, I was a, well, I was actually a skier, but I dabbed in mountain biking and, uh, and I wanted to, to be a mountain biker. That was the goal. I was kind of done with skiing and I really wanted to make that transition into um, mountain biking. And I did. Think, thanks to Cliff Bar and their support. So I put in put in some good time on the mountain bike. And then, um, you know, once again, when I when I was growing up in Europe, there was not women's cyclocross. There was there was mountain biking, there's road racing, but the women's cyclocross came in a little bit later. And I didn't actually realize there was the option, which is funny because I come from uh, Czech Republic, which uh, 
used to be like one of those cyclocross powerhouses, you know? And so it's funny because I was quite familiar with the sport and with the st stars of the sport. And we had races on TV every weekend, but the women's racing. So it's, it's kind of funny to watch the new generation because they had like junior races and they have U23 and they had this and that. And here I am almost in my thirties heading to cyclocross race for, <laughs> for the very first time. And, uh, I, I, I like to say the story that the, the reason why I tried cyclocross is my former teammate, Georgia Gold, who was our, already racing cyclocross and kind of encouraged me when she joined Luna to, to come and try. And I, I've been really big fan of that cycling discipline ever since. I mean, it's been fun to watch. I've definitely seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and, you know, you, you've been doing so many different things and, you know, you just had this injury this past year and you you said that when you went to do BWR that was something that was the longest race you'd ever done is that is that am I hearing that correctly oh yeah absolutely I mean I haven't really done that many long rides Cliff Bar uh, does their annual epiphany ride which the first few editions were 150 miles and I remember just taking a all day long because there's like stops along the way with food and you know you finish with delicious dinner and, and so um but even just getting through that that was kind of intimidating because like I mentioned earlier I come from that like much shorter much intense world and my training kind of reflected that racing you know so I you know probably longest rides would be five hours right so like racing for seven, eight hours. It was like, this is, this is long. And if somebody should be ready for it, it's, it's me because I've been doing this for a really long time, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm still kind of learning about the, the long distance and, and it continues to intimidate me. And I think the reason is because like, I am not very like, I mean, I try to do a better job, but I'm not very robotic, you know, like I'm more just like race it versus pace it and all the long distance it's you can you can do one wrong move you know you have to pace it right you have to eat right you have to drink enough you know and cyclocross we don't do any of that like you just go out until you blow out and you're done you know and hopefully that's at the end of the race but uh, the events got a little bit longer now but when I started cross it really was in that 35 to 45 minutes window and you just you just go out, you know? And so that's, that's how I race. So the, the long distance it's uh, yeah, it's, it's learning, it's learning curve for me, but that's also what's so cool about cycling that I can be, you know, professional rider for 20 years and still learn new things. I mean, you just, you just mentioned something that's really interesting. You know, you're talking about the cross and it being a really short, super high burst of energy and like, go, go, go. And that's the same thing with cross country skiing. And I mean that when I went to the Olympics uh, to go watch, I'll put that in big, I watched the Olympics. <laughs> Which in one did you go to? Uh, I went to uh, Park City up in Utah. Oh. So yeah. we went to watch. I raced there. So I probably saw you on the cross country course. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, but I remember it, I mean, there's no snack breaks. There's no, there's no water. You can't carry. I mean, it's full gas. And the one thing that I remember was watching people turn themselves inside out. Like I, I mean, yes, I've seen it in cycling, but that moment of watching people at the Olympics in cross country, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen the look <laughs> of sheer exhaustion on someone's face. Like I have that day. Um, and it's pretty powerful. I mean, you've, you've been there, like you, that it, did you feel like that was an easy transition into doing cross because you've had that like all out hundred percent full effort of your body or was it a whole new world again? No, it was like, I, at this point I was a cyclist for a few years, but mountain biking was more in that like two hours, two and a half hours kind of effort, you know, mountain biking is much shorter now, the cross country, the traditional cross country mountain biking is in that an hour, an hour and a half window now. But when I started, I actually kind of had to build that endurance. That was, that was something I was lacking, but from, 
day one, I was really good at short track because once again, that was kind of the top and speed that I was quite familiar with. And then once I discovered cyclocross, I felt like that was, uh, that was the sport I've been looking for all this time because, you know, it was fun to ride through mud. It was a really great environment. Uh, it was short, intense. Uh, I didn't even mind the cold at first coming from like ski background. I was like, it's not cold. This is fine. Now I don't like to be cold anymore. <laughs> Something to do with aging, I think. But uh, so, yeah, I, I really, really, really liked it. And I like the challenge of just riding a rigid bike with skinny tires through any kind of conditions. I think it's I think it's really fun. I know it's not for everybody, but it's been definitely a fun sport for me. <laughs> I've tried it a couple of times. I love the fun level of it. Mostly the stuff I was doing was the DFL cross dress series. So you bring a six pack of beer, you wear a, a ladies tutu and you get to enter. It's race. pretty funny. You mentioned that because um, apparently it's been going on for a really long time. And I yeah. finally did my first one this September, I think, or early October. And I mean, like it doesn't get any better, right? Like I got on the BART on the East Bay with my bike, rode to the race, uh, just had a great time riding around all these men dressed up in dress. <laughs> and then and then proceeded to ride back to the BART station with a couple of them through San Francisco. They're still dressed up in their costumes, you know? And I was just like, this is such a perfect San Francisco day that, you know, it's funny get better. <laughs> it's totally outlaw races, right? And sometimes, the park rangers show up. So imagine two park rangers showing up to that and like 85 people scattering in different directions wearing tutus <laughs> and French maids outfits. <laughs> and, I mean, it's absolutely, they don't even know what to do. They just stand yeah. there. And, like, just and that's like, once again, like that's what I love about cycling because, you know, if I want to be serious and I've had plenty of time to do that, I will travel and race the World Cup, the World Championship, but there is everything from DFL to, uh, you know, to that, everything in between. And we just choose what we want to do, you know, and my, I mean, I think why I'm keeping cy cycling still fun and enjoy it is the, is the ability to mix both of those worlds, you know, like you don't have to do one or other, or, you know, you can choose and do whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. And you've been doing a lot, I mean, you've been riding a lot more gravel lately. I mean, where you live is pretty epic for gravel riding. I mean, there's unlimited, you know, gravel roads, but also let's be honest, there's great mountain biking up there too. I mean, you can't beat it. What, what do you think of how gravel is becoming such a massive, massive part? I mean, for me, it's kind of, I laugh, I love it. I mean, I've ridden my road bike on the dirt prior to having a gravel bike. We've all done it. We've all taken the sneak routes or ridden on gravel roads. I mean, for crying out loud, the Tour de France was rid originally ridden on gravel roads. <laughs> but it, it's so interesting how the, the paradigms changed. And it, it, you know, there's all the big jokes like gravel, which is ultimately a cross bike with slacker geometry. Or some people are saying it's like the old rigid mountain bikes, which is what I kind of believe. It's like riding an old rigid mountain bike all over again and having to pick your line. <laughs> I mean, are you enjoying that part as much as you have enjoyed mountain bike racing and um cyclocross or is it just you know you're just seeing it as another passing through way i personally love riding all kinds of bikes and like if i go back to that you know where i live so if you ask me five years ago i'd be like whatever gravel bikes like i can ride my cross bike or road bike but once i get proper uh gravel bike which was the uh specialized diverge with a little bit of like suspension uh and suddenly i am in a community where i live for 20 years and exploring totally new routes right like we have great mountain biking we have very limited road riding um around trekkie not enough roads but there is this unexplored world of gravel where I don't mind to be 10 miles on the pavement. I don't mind to come back ripping down some trails and this bike is capable on all of it. And I'm, you know, I've got bigger tires. I got a little bit of suspension. I've got enough, uh, 
storage for snacks or I just bring my camel back and like you can go all day long. So it's like, it is still the same, but it allows you to go different places, if that makes sense. Because before I wouldn't ride my road bike that far because you would probably get a flat tire on the stuff I ride now. I also wouldn't ride my mountain bike to those places because it's no fun to ride mountain bike on the pavement or even gravel road, I think, you know, like I don't really enjoy it. So um, <laughs> having the drop bar bike opened up a whole new world for me of, of terrain. And I really, really enjoy where the bikes are heading. And I, I think it's, I don't know, I think the industry is doing a really good job. And once again, like everybody can choose whatever they want to do, but I've definitely enjoyed my gravel bike and um, it helped me to, to get to whole new places. And they're not that far, you know, like there is so much stuff from, you know, 20 miles radius of Truckee that I've maybe never ridden my bike and now I can go there. And so it's pretty cool. Are you, are you thinking about doing more gravel races upcoming or are you going to try to play and cause there's, you know, <laughs> and if you want to talk about it or not, but as we know, um, team cliff is disbanding right? And after many, many years, which is a, a longer. Um, and you can tell me to pound sand if you don't want to say anything about it. <laughs> no, no, there's no secret. So yeah, uh, the team that I've been part of for 20 years, it's, uh, it's ending and uh, I've been, um, you know, so fortunate. Like I couldn't thank Cliff Bar enough for all the opportunities and I've raced all around the world with their support, whether it was mountain biking or cycling across i've done a little bit of road domestically i just done all the cool things and uh i wasn't ready to hang up my wheels you know so i uh been kind of working with a uh, bunch of the team sponsors to see how we can proceed and if they would continue to sponsor me and things are things are looking pretty good i'm putting my like uh my own thing together which is a new experience and it's been uh challenging for sure because i I've been part of this structure that, you know, we really were there to race for most part. Um, and none of that equipment, none of the, you know, travel and those things, like we didn't really deal with that. Like, I mean, yes, you, you still deal with things here and there, but like for most part, like Cliff Protein was definitely run as a very professional team. And we had the time to focus on just our performance. So uh, yeah, so it's a little bit of a uh, new world for me, but I, I do enjoy it. And obviously gravel is a big part of the domestic scene, um, which that that's my focus. I'm kind of like um, happy to just race domestically and not really travel the world as much anymore as I used to. So yeah, I'll do a little bit of gravel, but you know, I'm not, I'm not really that into be like just gravel racer or just mountain biker or just cross racer. I like to kind of mix it up because it's more fun and interesting. So yeah, I'll definitely be at more races, but I don't have a set schedule right now. And um, just, just hoping that like lost and found comes back some of the local stuff. And I'm always super excited about grasshoppers, but I also like do cross and then I want to ski and then everybody's been doing these miles and I've been like, train like racing for an hour and warm up for half an hour and then you call then you go home so you never have like the baseball so those are challenging especially like the early early season but I'm hoping to jump in few few of those once again because the community is just just the best and you know it's anything local uh, I want to be part of so they're super fun I mean grasshoppers are definitely one of my favorites I unfortunately can't go to the first one. I've already looked at my calendar and I can't go. I'm taking my son to look at a college. So um, parenting, <laughs> yeah, parenting, parenting's getting in the way, but that's okay. Cause that's my job. Um, so with now I, give everybody an idea of training for you, like, and what that was to get where, where you know, you've had a, a really, really powerful 20 year career of cycling. That's just it. Let's just put, that's just the cycling part. I'm going to put that little box over here. <laughs> and then you have this other whole, I mean, you were cross country racing, you know, and, and that was a whole other career. Then you transitioned to cycling. So you've had two massive, extremely successful sporting careers. 
And I want to, I'd love for you to give everybody a little taste of how much work goes into that, because I don't think it's really understood how much time and energy. And, and I had a really interesting conversation with somebody earlier in, you know, cycling is selfish, right? You have to be selfish to get where you want to be. And I say the same thing about my career. It's a very selfish career, yet we're giving nonstop, right? It's selfish to get where you want to be because <laughs> you're just always at work and you're always working hard to get to this end mean. So it would be really great if you could explain to everybody how much time and energy you put in to that first career as a cross-country skier and then the transition and how much you had to change and augment your training and then reevaluate yourself and then do it all over again. Cause that's, those are two big, massive jumps. Yeah. I mean, like being a professional athlete, it's uh, like, for me, it's been the best fit as far as like career goes. I, I definitely knew as a kid that a lot of other things did not interest me. I, you know, I went to school, I did okay. Eventually, came to United States and, you know, like actually completed university in second language. So I've done fine. If I'm motivated, I do fine, you know, but like sitting at the computer, or reading a book, like as a kid, that was a torture. You know, I, I guess we didn't have computers, but back then. So like, it's more, <laughs> it's more like right now sitting at the computer is torture. But uh, so I always been like so much more into being outdoors, but, you know, realize that you need education and you need to get to through school. Hope the kids are listening out there. Get your college degree, kids. Uh, and uh, yeah, I came to US on a skiing scholarship. And you know, at the time I didn't really realize what a what a great life decision that was, just uh, getting the education uh, for free. Uh, very nice uh, benefit of being a fast skier and and just the opportunity I had ever since by, you know, by relocating to California and meeting right people at the right time and meeting, uh, essentially landing a spot on the Luna Pro team. And so it's been, uh, it's been a lot of good life choices, but they, you know, they only came because I put in the work and I, I definitely grew up in that, uh, post-communist era in Eastern Europe where athletics was still given so much uh, focus because, you know, like during communism, like all these little countries like Czechoslovakia, where I grew up, they they couldn't really be the world players in so many uh, the ways, you know, because like a lot of the smart people, they left the country emigrated because they they weren't given the freedom to to do what they wanted to do under the communist regime and the athletes were kind of like really only only ones that could perform on the world stage they were allowed to travel and they were allowed to train and so it's like every every little east european country has been very into their athletes and you know so even though I, I kind of caught the end of the communist era and everything changed luckily uh there's still that infrastructure that it was very easy if you were talented and motivated and chose sports it was easy pathway you know because like I joined a club as a little kid and every fall we went to uh, to the office and there were skis lined up and you just find the skis that fit your height and you know so you didn't have to go buy all this equipment and there were coaches and they would you know they would drive we would go in super old bus to every ski race and sometimes we made it sometimes we had to run to the finish <laughs> to the start of the race like so it was it was pretty easy the entryway was much easier than it is these days, you know, like uh, the equipment's expensive and um, obviously the parents have to get involved heavily to help the kids to get to the best competition. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, once again, I just, I just like running around and riding bikes and skiing and playing and, you know, chasing faster people around. Like I am, I was born in December and, uh, December kids or fall kids are like, you know, like my first 10 year of my life was like always chasing this girl who was 
born in January. She was always a year older, you know? And so I think it just made me like this tough little kid that just wanted to catch the girl because we're the same age, but we, you know, we were not the same age, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It was, it was good. I started very young, probably five with gymnastics and then added skiing and we did track and field and road bikes. And I always liked diversity and trying new things. And, uh, and then things got pretty serious as far as training when I went to ski academy for high school, 14 to 18. That's when like, uh, there was still a lot of fun, but there was a structured training and, you know, uh, kind of focused on what we were doing. It was no longer just running around having fun all the time, but even that it was always fun for me. And then transition into cycling. And I really realized like, I didn't know that much about cycling. Uh, cause when I came here to college, I, I could kind of like coach myself for skiing. Cause I was like sort of training harder than most people <laughs> on the team. So, um, uh, uh, once I did make the switch in, uh, it's been almost 25. So it's like, um, now for the first time I'm training for cycling, uh, you know, I didn't really know, like, I just didn't know what to do. You know, it was very different training than skiing. So I eventually got a coach and work with the same guy for a really, really long time. And I kind of went from that cyclist who could go for an hour and then be done blow up on the side of the trail dropping 15 spots to to being a good mountain biker for you know world cup and hitting top 10 and eventually winning the world cups and uh so it's i don't know like so many hours so many years of work but i always try to keep it like um balance you know i'm not i'm not like the person who's gonna go like crazy for two months and then be exhausted for three months so it's like balance approach listening to your body knowing your body luckily like power meter came into my uh world pretty late in my career and i you know at that point i knew my body so well so i could add that as an effective tool, not just that tool that's going to frustrate you every three seconds because you're not holding the power that somebody told you to. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, just continue to learn about the training, but a uh, very, very balanced approach, especially now, especially like during COVID and post COVID, like I went back to just doing more riding than structure training and it really, I don't know. It really seems to be a good fit for me. And, uh, you know, I challenge myself plenty in the races, like competing with people that are 20 years younger, uh, is hard, <laughs> but I keep trying and, uh, you know, hopeful that my endurance and experience will work out at some of these events. So, um, yeah, I know it's kind of a long answer, uh, but I've had a long career and I've definitely been fortunate to to figure out myself what works for me and work with some great people and have a good support to, to make it this far. Well, what, you know, what I'm hearing, which is really, really important is you surrounded yourself with people to guide you when you didn't have the answers instead of making them up. And I think that's a really powerful thing to know when you don't have the right answers and ask for help. And I think that's a huge measure of success. You know, when you, the measure of everyone's success is, is being able to solve problems, right? And, and to move forward with that. And, you know, I think that's a big learning step for a lot of people and learning to reach out and say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing or can you guide me to get to the next level? And I think that's, I had to do that in my career. Cooking, I didn't know. I mean, that's why I read all these books, you know, and it's, uh, it, it, it comes with practice and over and over again, repetition and education. So I think that's a really, really, you know, great answer like it's just straight up you just, you're being honest yeah like i you know i think uh i mean with social media people can feel like oh yeah you just in a couple of years you have it all figured out because there are people that are very successful at super young age which 
you know, the number of the younger athletes that are so successful, it's much smaller than the more mature athletes. But even these athletes that have become world champions at, you know, let's say 18, 19, some of these kids been doing the work for a really, really long time. You know, they've been on this specific path of being, um, you know, just, just being mountain bikers or road racers or, you know, so it's, Yes, for some people, very talented people, it's quite possible to to achieve all the great things early in their career. But I kind of enjoyed like taking my time and just chipping it, chipping away at it. <laughs> I mean, obviously changing uh, sport in my early 20s. It's kind of like I never reach I never reach my skiing potential. You know, I left that sport very young. So um, it's hard to tell how far I would have gotten with it but it was kind of neat to start all over and have so much to learn and so much to kind of uh figure out and in a way I mean I think that's why I'm still bike racing and bike riding because it's like learning's never done you know like the day you kind of figure out and I'm sure it's the same for you with cooking like the day you're not excited to try some new recipe or come up with new idea you'd be like I should probably move on and do something different with my life, you know. It's boring, so, yeah, it's exactly. Boring. So I think it's kind of like, I mean, I just finished uh, a race in Michigan called Iceman uh, this weekend, and it's typically very fast to the finish. And we had group of seven this year, like it was, you know, it's like dry year and it was super fast and it was like really good group of strong women out there. And I got third, which was great. But like for two, three days, you keep thinking like, man, could I play the finish a little differently to win the race? You know, and that's, that's what's so cool about cycling. And uh, I don't know, like, I mean, I was happy to be on the podium, but at the same time, like, you analyze what you did in the race and what you could have done differently. And it's like, here I am. I've been in those kind of scenarios so many times, yet there's not perfect formula. So I think that's that's the biggest point with sports. It's like, there's no formula to do it perfectly. Like you got to find your own way, your own path, uh, your own success and define what that means. You know, it's a different thing for everybody and, and keep, keep evolving and, and having fun because I think people take it too seriously. It's like, you know, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> I think it's, you know, I, was, I, I said to somebody the other day, you know, bikes were the first, first way you could get the farthest away from your parents, right? You couldn't hear them yell to say, come home for dinner. And there was that moment of freedom, right? You're like far away. That's a powerful feeling, right? It's like, I love that part of a bike is that it makes you yeah. feel wild all over again. Yeah. And it's like, I touched on that in my presentation the other day uh, for UCI. And it was just like so sad because we're, you know, talking about the global warming. And that's exactly that feeling that everybody describes about bike, right? But it kind of goes away as soon as people get a car. And now they traded that that feeling for convenience. And how can we bring that back to fight these crises? You know, because essentially we need more people commute by bike. And we have every kind of bike there is these days. You don't even have to really pedal them hard. So there's no excuse on that, right? True. So um you know, I love the technology and electric cars and all of that, but we just really need more people to get back on the bicycle and like skip that mile, two miles commute uh, and replace it by something environmentally more friendly. And the bike is such a perfect tool. Uh, the other piece to that is the, it's how we get treated on the road, you know, which is, I think that's ultimately the biggest challenge for every cyclist out there or everybody who's considering to get on the bike and commuting by bike is like, how am I going to get treated by cars? And I don't know. I, I, I wish I had some ex- like good idea for that. Like how can we change that mindset? But I don't right now, but I'm going to keep thinking because I think that's a 
that's a crucial piece if we want to be successful and we want to pr protect this planet is exchange the driver's perception of cyclists you know like i'm sure you've seen these videos where it's like like everybody stops for a cute bear crossing the road with the cubs and you know there's cars both directions and everybody's filming it and it's the cutest thing ever and then you're like i mean i love animals of course i would stop for bears and stuff or any kind of animal crossing but like if you compare that to a cyclist how many of these drivers would be like get out of my way i'm gonna hit you you know <laughs> so it's like how can we value that cyclist life as as anything out there is everything out there on the road? You know, how can we go back to like sharing that road without, you know, animosity? Without exactly, yeah. And so. I think it's a really, really important piece because we have so many people who want to commute. We have people that are afraid to get in entanglements with vehicles or have arguments with folks in cars. But I think that you're right. The people that are driving that are getting frustrated with people on, on bikes have forgotten that they once rode a bike. They were those people prior to getting a license. And I think it's learning to understand how to work together. I mean, it's just another mode of transportation. Some people can't afford a car and they have to ride a bike to work. So yeah. what, what's bad about them? So I think that there's- But others choose to do that, right? Like others like, put on a raincoat and will commute by bike every single day because that's what they want to do. And, and, and then there's us, the, the athletes, like there are days I don't touch my car because I can start my work from the house, right? I get on my bike and I just ride back to the house and I never get in the car, you know? And I think it's kind of cool, you know? It is. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> So I like to do a little game. There's no wrong answers. It's just a quick and simple. Oh, you're gonna make me think? All you're right. gonna have to think, but it's all fun <laughs> stuff, I promise. I think, you'll, I think you'll dig this one. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Espresso, cappuccino? Cappuccino. Red or white wine? Oh. I... I have to pick one. I guess red. Light. I like them both. You like <laughs> <laughs> light or dark beer? Um, I am. I am not good. Check. Don't tell anybody, but I don't drink much beer. <laughs> I'm embarrassment for the Czech society. <laughs> I, <laughs> I actually like Belgian beer, but you know. Definitely a lighter beer. I can't handle IPA. Like I can't even finish IPA. So <laughs> I moved. I moved here. Um, you know, early twenties, and I drank Mexican beer here and there. I went back home. I was so proud of myself. Dad, I can drink beer. You know, and we went out for beer. Your traditional Czech beer. And yeah, not good. Did not impress Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so okay beef, beef or pork uh beef okay nigiri sashimi sashimi sea urchin or caviar oh caviar <laughs> i don't like searching much i landed it a few times maybe i need to try again but uh yeah caviar it's good lobster or crab uh, lobster. Okay. Hamburger, hot dog. Hamburger. <laughs> Ketchup. Hot dogs, hot dogs, questionable. I, I grew up in the Eastern Europe and I, I don't even eat a whole lot of meat because it, it's so much questionable meat that like deli meat, I, I still don't eat deli meat. Like, you know, <laughs> this is so, awesome. hot, hot dog. If there is like, you know, like, for those that travel in Europe, like, you know, you can get a delicious meal at any gas station, right? Like uh, just salad, soup, whatever, homemade that day. In the US, if it's like, I mean, 
if you're starving, right? And you stop at the gas station and you're like, what should I eat? I have purchased Cliff Bars wearing a Cliff Bar t-shirt because I refuse to get that hot dog. And people look at me like, why are you buying Cliff Bars? I'm like, because they're delicious, much better than the hot dogs. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. Oh, okay. Ketchup or mustard? Uh, ketchup. Really? That's a shock. I would have never <laughs> that. I just big fan of tomatoes and I know like that's really far away from heirloom tomato uh, <laughs> ketchup, but I don't know. I'm a big fan of tomatoes. Mustard's great too, but yeah, definitely ketchup. Pasta or noodles? Um, like what? Like noodles, like, isn't that the same thing? Pasta noodle? Well, it depends. I guess. Depends. Like when right. I think pasta, I think more like Italian style pastas or noodles. I'm thinking like pho, ramen. Yeah. Yeah. Ramen. Noodles. Yep. Stuff like that. No noodles. Yeah. Noodles? Mm -hmm. Dumpling or ravioli? Uh, dumpling. Burrito, tacos. Oh, tacos. I'm making tacos tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like this game because I feel like you will know my preference and you're like assembling all this knowledge to cook me dinner one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you're up in the valley visiting with <laughs> Gary and Kit, we can make that happen at the restaurant. How's that sound? That's, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm big, um, I'm a big fan of others cooking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one, chocolate or fruit? Ooh. Hmm. That's hard because I really like both. But I guess there's more variety to fruit, so I'll stick with fruit. It's not the same every day. I'm there's variety to chocolate too, but yeah, I'll go with fruit. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm definitely more fruit person too. So. How are people going to know what's going on with you now? Like, where are they going to see this new change and what's happening now that <laughs> you has moved? You know, you're going to be moving to do different things. Um, where's the best way for people to follow you and find out? Probably Instagram. I would say I'm the most active on Instagram. Uh, I try to participate on Twitter, but I mainly read Twitter. I don't contribute much. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely Instagram. Um, Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm super excited to be able to chat with you. And um, I really think what you have to offer this younger generation, I mean, you're seeing so many, the women's cycling has changed dramatically, which I'm very excited to see. I'm really excited to see equal payouts happening. There needs to be more of it. There needs to be more women on bikes. To be honest, I have more fun when I'm out riding with the likes of you and Serena and the whole gang, you know, Lauren Hall. It's just way more fun. It's yeah, well, hopefully we'll get back together and I, yeah, hopefully I can make it back to, to the um, spacing on the event now. Campo, <laughs> Campo Velo? Campo Velo, of course, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can bring the, you know, bring the race back out there and uh, the, gang. Yeah, I, the gang back together. And, yeah, I think like bikes and good food and wine, like it doesn't get much better than that, so. <laughs> Well, Katerina, thank you so much for taking time. I really appreciate it. I know you've got uh, you've got some tacos to make, and uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you were able to get some miles in today. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's revisit the dinner topic one of these days. I got. I, <laughs> that's a deal. I, that's a deal. Done. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Thank you.